Welcome to the National Pulse. I'm Raheem Kassam, editor-in-chief of the NationalPulse.com. It's Wednesday, November the 4th, the year of our Lord 2020. We are live here from downtown in Washington, D.C. on the Real America's Voice Network. Now, there's a lot of news breaking in this hour, in the past hour, especially as it pertains to Wisconsin. Now, the Associated Press and Fox News' own decision desk are calling Wisconsin for Joe Biden here. I think that's preemptive. I think it's preemptive given the fact that the Trump campaign is mounting a recount call in Wisconsin at the moment. But hey, we've learned a lot. We've learned an awful lot in the last 24 hours over who, about who our friends are, who our allies are and who we've been wasting our time with for years and years. And we'll get into that in a, in a little bit on the show. As you can tell, <laughs> we didn't get much sleep last night, but that's okay. That's what these times are for. And it's frankly, in politics, in, in a world of uh, media and politics, these are the times, these are the times we live for. These are the most exciting times. They're also the most precarious times for the nation and we take it incredibly seriously everything that's going on right now so let's let's give you some more news for you right here the president's legal team are amassing uh, uh, their the resources and deploying them to Wisconsin Pennsylvania and beyond Rudy Giuliani is due the president's personal lawyer is due to arrive in this hour in Pennsylvania I suggested this morning that the president does a rally in Pennsylvania it looks like they've, uh, they've dispatched Rudy Giuliani. Maybe the president goes as well. We'll find out as time goes on. And as and when that press conference becomes available, we'll try to bring it to you live here on Real America's Voice. I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of um, unrest now, unease. People are disconcerted about some of the results that they're seeing. And I, I have to go back and tell you that these are things that we warned about. I'm going to be very honest with you. Things that we warned about back in August, and I am just so incredibly disappointed in so many people on our side, presumably on our side, they say they're on our side, who spent so long over the course of this year, so much time, so much money, so many resources, on things that just didn't matter, things that were unwinnable, you know, campaigns that didn't need to be fought in the way they were fought. And we were telling you, the people who watched this show from when we launched it on, on August the 17th, you will remember, we talked about the Transition Integrity Project. They told us what their playbook was. And not enough people on the right wanted to take it seriously. I know the audience took it seriously. I know you guys took it seriously. Because so many of you go to the National Pulse website every day, and you sign up as members, and you take action, and you write to your congressman. I get it. But let me tell you something. We need you people running the RNC. We need you people in the apparatus of government. We need you guys advising the President of the United States because frankly the people around him, most of the people around him, you know, he's got some, he's got some really good people around him, Jason Miller, Steve Cortez, but there are still some people around him who just do not get it. I told you what they were gonna do, the Transition Integrity Project. Nigel Farage came on this show on August the 20th and he said it will look on the night like President Trump has won and in the days afterwards they're gonna find votes they're gonna find whatever votes they need they're gonna find them in the back of trucks they're gonna find them in trash bags they're gonna find them underneath desks they're gonna find them stuffed into their back pockets they'll probably find them on printers told you what was gonna happen if you don't believe me Get the Google, get the DuckDuckGo, whatever your search engine of choice is, go on there, the National Pulse. Nigel Farage, August the 20th, on this show, we have it on Twitter, the clip of what he said. It was, it was exactly right. He was exactly right. And I'm not even talking about the GOP establishment here when I lament the fact that millions upon millions of dollars was spent in districts that it just shouldn't have been spent on. Wasted time. Heritage is still buying up more buildings on Capitol Hill and naming them after their donors. For what? For nothing. And meanwhile, we're in a fight, <laughs> not even for the nation, 
We're in a fight for Western civilization right here. And I want to see the hands. I want to see hands go up. And admissions of guilt, mere culpas from the people who wasted our time over the course of this year. It sticks in my craw. It sticks in my craw because we run the National Pulse on a team of two and a budget of zero. You know, whatever you guys do, you come to our site, you go to the website and you hit the support button, you hit the donate button, literally. People give 500 bucks, people give 10 bucks. That's what we run off. And these $80 million a year organizations on Capitol Hill and these $45 million organizations in Arizona doing what? And this is the hill we're going to have to climb after this. Who knows where we're going to go? I'm not, I'm not a pessimist. Although my guest in studio will tell you something different. I'm not a pessimist. We're going to bring him in in just a second. I still think there's a path to victory here. And I think it's a hard graft to victory here. Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Hamid Dillon, all of the legal team doing their utmost. I think they can win this thing. I think they can pull it out. It doesn't help the Fox News is making stupid and wrong calls every two minutes. It's okay. We don't need them. I think there's a path to victory, but it's going to require all of us to put our shoulder to the wheel right here to flood the zone with information, to flood the zone with objections, to flood the zone with legal, political, media interventions in all of this. Because otherwise, America looks like a banana republic. We'll be back with my guest in just a minute. There is a fraud being perpetuated on the United States of America. That is what's happening right now. There is one grand, massive fraud being perpetuated on the Western world. And the useful idiots in the media who aren't reporting on it, the discrepancies in the numbers, the magic ballots that are being found at four and five o'clock in the morning, they are the enemy of the people. They are the enemy of your vote. They are the enemy of national sovereignty and of your sovereignty, of your right to choose who governs you. And I know a little bit of something about it. You see, in 2001, Tony Blair, the former British Prime Minister, instituted mass mail-in voting in my country, in the United Kingdom. And what happened after that? A spike, massive, soaring numbers in enfranchisement. What a wonderful thing, except it came with mass, soaring amounts of fraud all across the country from Tower Hamlets in East London to Birmingham in the Midlands to the north of England, in Scotland, in Wales, in Northern Ireland. You could just, you could swing a cat and hit fraud in elections in the United Kingdom. Now, and that's why in August I wrote the article. I wrote a whole article just laying this out and we had David Maddox, David Maddox on this show. The madman. He came on and he talked about all the instances since 2001 that we've seen of mail-in ballot fraud, electoral fraud in the United Kingdom, how it went down, the judges who have presided over these cases have written articles. I don't even know, I'm not even a fan of the Spectator magazine, but they published an incredible piece before this election here in the United States where the judge, one of the most senior election judges in the United Kingdom came out, he said, this election in the United States is ripe for fraud, and he knows a thing or two about it. We are going to be following this stuff very closely, intently, and without sleep, as you can see I've already been doing. But we're going to be doing it day in and day out until the result is fair. 
and the fair result of the votes cast on the day that Donald, is that Donald J. Trump is the President of the United States of America and should be the next President of the United States of America. I have great faith in the legal team that's about to go up on stage and do a press conference in Philadelphia right now. I have great faith in the people across the country who are fighting this. And I have great faith in you at home watching this because I know you're watching because you want something to do. Well, here there are a lot of things you can do. There are an awful lot of things you can do. Firstly, contact the Trump campaign. See if they need your help. If you're a lawyer, if you're an activist, you've got free time, you can go down to the courthouse, you can, whatever it is, contact the campaign right now. Right now. Go to the website, find the contact section, contact them. If you've seen any, any discrepancies, don't think it's just one or two things, odd things that you've seen, report it to somebody, report it to the local elections board, report it to your local poll watchers, report it to your local police if you think it's of that grave a concern. Do it, do it now. You don't get this moment back. I've lived it. In 2015, when Nigel Farage was running for a seat in Parliament in the southeast of England, ballot boxes disappeared overnight. They did. Go and look it up. And they came back in the morning and suddenly what was deemed to be a Nigel victory in that seat turned into a victory for an opposition party of about 3,000 votes. Now, at the time, we didn't have the resources. We, frankly, didn't have the fight in us. We were too tired, exhausted. Small team, six of us. I mean, national team was six of us. And we didn't have it within us to fight it. You don't get these moments back. I want to bring in our guest now. Jerome Riviere is a member of the European Parliament for France, president of the Rassemblement National Delegation in the European Parliament, and somebody who's as tired as I am. Jerome, welcome back to the show. We were grateful Thank to you, have Ray. you yesterday. Look, you can see I'm even kind of getting a little emotional about this because I'm remembering the times that fraud has been perpetrated on us, and you've seen it in your country as well. Tell me how you felt watching the results come in last night. Last night was a pretty good night because I felt it was in line with what we were expecting. President Trump was uh, grabbing the votes and the states where we were expecting him to win. It was basically a huge disappointment for Joe Biden. Florida was not the Biden victory. Texas was not a Biden victory. And I felt very confident listening to the people that were explaining the data. I felt like, OK, this, this is a Trump's victory. And I must say that the first surprise for European citizens was the fact that suddenly Philadelphia decided to stop counting. Mm. I've never seen in, a, in an election process uh, elected official decide suddenly to stop counting. Very, very strange. And, and after the two hours that, that I slept today and I woke up, I, I discovered that they suddenly in Pennsylvania found 136,000 ballots. 100% of them in favor of uh, Joe Biden. So, I, you know, maybe it's not Joe Biden running. Maybe it's David Copperfield because it's a magical trick. Mm. How can you find 100% of ballots for one candidate? It is really something that is disappointing in the American process. The democratic process here is not fair, it is not transparent, and it is not uh, at the level of what one could expect of, uh, of the United States of America. And I have great faith in, uh, in Rudy Giuliani and his team to make sure that the, the Ameri American people that cast the vote for Donald Trump are accounted for and that the cheating ballots are not the one that will carry the presidency. How? How can we take the result of this election seriously? Oh, you cannot. I mean, uh, who could take that seriously? S s such drastic changes. You even have, have, have questions on the number of ballots that have been casted compared to the number of registered voters. How many of them didn't the, have signatures? Uh, How many of them were naked ballots? How many of them are going to be counted up till November the 6th? This is not a lie. This I told, is a fraud. I told you yesterday, mail-in ballots is not something acceptable in a democracy. We don't have them in France. I thought I was not doing fine in France because we, we, we question our our system, but we don't have mail-in ballots because we know it's fraudulent. We, we, all, we already have fraud in France, you know, as you mentioned, like uh, s s some boxes of, of ballots disappearing and people putting yeah. fake ballots, but we don't have mail-in ballots. Mail-in ballots is, is a straight pass to cheating. We'll come back and we'll talk about it uh, with you, Jerome, in just a moment. I want to make sure that in the break you're heading over to the nationalpulse.com. Natalie Winter's running the live blog. We'll be right back.
when we do shows like this, often, and last night, uh, uh, 1.2 million people watched our broadcast from the, uh, from the top of 101 Constitution Avenue over the Capitol building. No screen behind us, no wall behind us, just the freezing cold and the audience in front of us. And that was what kept us warm all night, watching the live chat, watching the hundreds of thousands of you viewing it live. Richard Barris with his incredible, incredible analysis live. Stephen K. Bannon, Fog City Midge, Jack Maxey, Bill McGinley, the whole team was there last night. If you haven't watched it, by the way, go back to, uh, go back to the Steve Bannon's War Room YouTube page and watch it later. Eight hours if you've got it. Um, I mean, when you do shows like that, you want to be constantly breaking news, right? You got a call here, you got an objection here, you got a movement here, you, and you kind of want to do that today as well. But here's the deal: we don't actually know anything because what we do know is that you can't trust the AP calls, you can't trust the CNN calls, you can't trust the Fox Decision Desk calls. There's a, there's a recount being demanded right now in Wisconsin, and AP and Fox are declaring Joe Biden the victor. How do you do that, your media organization? You're not the elections board. How do you do that when there's a recount going on? You can't declare a victor when the opposite side says, hey, we're within 20,000 votes, we're gonna request a recount. Fox goes, nah, screw your recount. We're going to hand it to the other side. That, it doesn't work like that. that. That's not news. That's propaganda. That's activism. That, that's fraud. That's not reporting on an election. What the hell is Fox playing at? I'm baffled. I'm baffled. I, although, i got to tell you, the greatest audience I ever had on this show was when I ripped into Fox for cutting off the former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, for daring to mention George Soros on air. He dared to mention George Soros on air. All the money that Soros has been plowing into the uh, local races around the country to make sure that they have uh, attorney generals, attorneys general in place across the country, up and down the country, to make sure that the Supreme Courts are stacked. Uh, up and down the country, the state supreme courts with left-wing judges, activist judges, and Newt Gingrich dared to raise it on Fox. Well, Newt Gingrich was absolutely correct, because what are we going to see now? Legal battles taking place all across the country, and who is going to be in the back of them? Those same attorneys general, those same judges, backed by Soros. And this is why Fox didn't want him talking about it. Because Nils Gilman, regular viewers of this show will know the name, Nils Gilman, the co-founder of the Transition Integrity Project. Jerome, I, ju I just need you to confirm something here. I'm not on auto queue, right? I'm, there's no teleprompter in front of me. Uh, yeah, there is no teleprompter, definitely. Okay. Nils Gilman, who said that Michael Anton the author of the Flight 93 election, remember that? Claremont Institute, used to work in the uh, president's national security apparatus. Nils Gilman said that Michael Anton should be put up against the wall and shot. Remember that? Two months ago. Nils Gilman gave an interview to Vox in August. And Nils Gilman said, you know, really the most important people of this whole thing it's not the President of the United States. It's not the former Vice President of the United States. It's not the election officials. It's not the Supreme Court. Nils Gilman said the most important people were Rupert and Lachlan Murdoch. Because as they make the calls, they will wear down the right. They will beat us down. Ah, oh, Fox is saying it, we should just give in. That's the plan, that's the ploy, that's the scheme. Nils Gilman already had gone to Fox in advance, said don't call it. He'd gone to Facebook and said you've got to suppress the information. The President of the United States tweets this morning are being shut down by Jack Dorsey and Twitter. 
his opinion, his opinion about the way the race is shaping up is being suppressed. He hasn't barricaded himself into the Oval Office. He hasn't said, I'm not leaving. He said, hey, I think, we, I think we're gonna win. Looks like we've won. The same thing that every campaign does. Whether it's the night of the election, whether it's the morning after, every campaign in a close-knit race goes out and goes, yeah, you know what? We've got this in the bag. It would be election malpractice if you're a campaign professional to go out there in a tight race, tell your candidate, you know what? You better hedge. Don't say you're, yeah, don't say you're won. But that's, that's, they shut him down for that. Common practice, the norms. Jerome, help me out here, because I'm. I, the more I talk about this, the more I think about it. No, but it's our fault. I'm sorry, Raheem. We knew it. The French. We have no, no. The, the French, but the French too. The British, Europe, the America, That's true. The, the, the the people that were backing Trump. We have known from the very very beginning that this is the way it's going. Soros is doing the same thing in Europe. He bought out 150 judges at the European um, Court of uh, of Human Rights. He, he, he's, he's, he's doing it in open sight. We all know it. And what I'm upset at are the, the, the donors that are supposed to be backing us up. The donors that pretend to say that they want to save Western civilization. And it is what is at stake today. It's not the presidency of the United States. It's a Western civilization. It's what we believe in. Are we going to have our nations disappear? Or do we believe that um, nations are important? Are we going to go to a fully globalized world where we are just consumers or product? This is what they want. This is what George Soros want. This is what the globalists want. We know it and we have done nothing about it. I'm not meaning you, you, you have a show, but I'm, I'm extremely upset no, at the people that have the means and, and do not really care. Are they honest? Do they really want to do something about it? I kind of doubt it now, because at one point when, you, when things are so clear in advance and you do nothing about it, you're not really honest. You're just, in fact, giving up the game. And, and as, as you said, Fox, they are just buying back their way into the system. They think that it's easier to be within the system. You just, like, get a little slap on the end, and, and that's it. Jerome, Very disappointing. Jerome, I know I'm bogarting all the time, so in the next segment, make sure I come straight back to you. Jerome Revere, member of the European Parliament. We'll be right back here on the National Pulse. Stick around. Welcome back. Let's let's do some good things here this afternoon. We got a we got a press conference that we're going to try and bring you live as it happens about the results in Pennsylvania. But I just want to want to break from uh, Bloomberg here. <laughs> I realize you can't trust Bloomberg either. But I want to I want to tell you what they're saying right here. So as of two minutes ago, 3.28 Eastern Time, Bloomberg reports that the Trump campaign is now declaring victory in Pennsylvania. That's what we need. We need this campaign and this president out there saying, yes, it is ours. You may not steal it. You may not steal one of the last things that is precious to the individual to the American citizen, you may not undermine it. I want to show the uh, show the audience the feed uh, when we can um, on the screen of what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the press conference to take place in um, in Pennsylvania uh, in just a moment. These are these are pivotal moments, Jerome. This is this is what we live for, right? These are the fights that, that we're in this for. You know, go governing actually is relatively easy compared to winning the right to govern. And it is a, it is a, almost a physical experience. And I think that uh, President Trump has to pull it off. It's up to it's up to him. And if there is one person that has the stamina to do it. It is him. Uh, we witnessed one of his last uh, meetings in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has the physical power to go there and to tell his team, look, 
I want to keep what is mine. I want to keep what was given to me by the American people. It's really a question of, of wanting it enough so that he, he keeps what was given to him, the responsibility that is given to him by the American people. It is really, uh, at one point, a physical question. And I believe that in that, in that respect, uh, President Trump will, 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 will really crush Joe Biden, who, is, uh, who appears as, as really like a, um, a, a person that is manipulated by his team. I don't believe that uh, Joe Biden has in himself uh, the, the, the guts, the stamina to go grab something uh, that does not belong to him. So this is why I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful. And what you said about, uh, about Pennsylvania, the fact that uh, the Trump campaign is saying, look, it is ours, it is our this victory. This is action now. It's, it is action, and it's, this is what we're expecting. But, you know, knowing that Rudy Giuliani is over there, he, he's, not, he's, he's, a, he's a winner guy. He's not he the will, kind of guy will, that puts his feet up. Exactly, will never let something go. Yeah. If, if this say belongs to them... Rudy. Say what you want about Rudy. Yeah. He's not a guy that puts his feet up on the table and sits back and no, relaxes. No, if, if it belongs to them, they will grab it, they will fight for it. And when they do that, they fight for the American people. And that's what we expect of President Trump. That's what he has, he has been selling. I've been, he has been fighting for the American people. And he's delivering here in Pennsylvania. I think it's great. I think it's great as well. Uh, Jerome, let's talk a little bit about last night. We were up there on that rooftop, but amazing time. We're so grateful for you guys to all join us, your delegation from the European Parliament and, and Senator from France as well, who was with you. Tell us a little bit about watching, how it felt watching the results come in in real time last night. It, w it was... At, at the same time, a little scary when you see Ohio taking time to, to come in. Uh, it was uh, exhilarating when you saw that Florida was, was called in so early on. And you know, uh, uh, some things that will enlighten the, the people. We have uh, our CNN in France, it's called BFM. It's a, it's a, it's a channel totally very close to, to CNN. Yeah. Same type of mainstream media, they trash Trump all the time. And, and yesterday they called and they said, can we please come to this uh, to, 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 to this uh, party or not a party, but to, 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 to the to the rooftop because we want to be there. We know this is where the action is taking place. They were not trying to go to any Biden uh, calling station. They wanted to be there because they knew they understood that things were going to happen there. And all night on French TV, they had reports from the rooftop yeah. uh, explaining how, in fact, the, the, it was a very close race because in France, they, they were so sure, sure that Joe Biden was going to win within minutes of, uh, of seven o'clock at night. So it was it was exhilarating. The real disappointment was this morning waking up after those two hours when when you when you are told that some magical ballots appear. And it's really like the, the the big disappointment because we have faith in Europe in the Euro American democracy and seeing a failure of democracy in America is a big thing. It's a big thing for the American. It's a big thing for the Western world. All right, um, Jerome, I just want to bring the audience some, some breaking news here uh, and bring you some breaking news here and get your reaction to it as well. So we reported that the Trump campaign is declaring a victory in Pennsylvania. OK, so Bill Stepien, the campaign manager, is, is, is declaring a victory in Pennsylvania. He added that Joe Biden would have to get 78 percent of outstanding votes to win. And that is where the Trump campaign is saying, hey, that's not possible. Joe Biden does not have a path to victory in Pennsylvania. And those 20 electoral votes, Donald Trump is now claiming for himself, which puts the race, if you add the 237 that the New York Times has uh, Joe Biden at, it's 237 to 234. This is neck and neck. This is about, this is about as tight as it gets. As tight as it gets with so many Americans having casted a ballot, because this is something that is very refreshing. So many people went out and decided to vote. After the fact that we 100 million ballots were casted via, via early voting, yeah. discovering that more than 60 million Americans decided to go on that day to cast a ballot is something very refreshing that tells a lot about uh, the uh, American de democratic process. And these people are Trump supporters. So there is something that Trump brought to the American democracy. He put people out, he put people on the street to go to a ballot, put a ballot booth and to, and to cast a vote. And this, thing, this is where we see hope. This is where I believe that the, the, the America will re rebuild, reshape it 
itself because people feel concerned. They understand that it's up to them to, to, to decide about the future. Yeah, what are we going to get here? I mean, 155 million, 160 million votes here. Uh, Joe Biden has just surpassed uh, Barack Obama in terms of amassing the most number of votes uh, uh, any president in American history has had. And whether you like it or not, you know, the, the, the level of engagement in this election, at least, is a, is a, a, you know, a great thing. I mean, there are even dead people voting. All right, we'll be back. Jokes aside, we'll be back with more news. We'll bring you the press conference as we get it here on the National Pulse, Real America's Voice. Make sure you're tuned in here today and after this show. We'll be right back. Absolute scenes. In Pennsylvania, as we're expecting the uh, arrival of Eric Trump, Laura Trump, Mayor Rudy Giuliani, and former Attorney General for Florida, Pam Bondi, alongside, I think, also uh, campaign senior advisor Corey Lewandowski, uh, set to arrive in uh, in Philadelphia. Now, we don't know if uh, we don't know if these are the actual. So let's let's put this on screen. This appears to be some kind of protest that's taking place in or around where um, where they're supposed to... Sorry, I just got this in my ear. We're bringing you the breaking news, of course, so I just want to make sure that we're being uh, absolutely correct about all of this. There, there, there are some, some Biden-Harris placards being held up there. Uh, protect the result, count every vote. You can see that on your screens right there. Um, this is clearly out, an, an outdoor shot of what's taking place um, in, in Pennsylvania right now. So we're going to, in Philadelphia, so we're going to make sure that we bring you the latest news as we get it right here. Now, of course, as you guys know, because you're the, you're the most patient ones out there, the audience, these people are often late to their own press conferences. I've watched the president be late, uh, several hours late in some instances. We had Boris Johnson going up to give a speech about how he was taking the UK into another lockdown recently. He was two and a half hours late to his own press conference. So Jerome, we may not even get it in this hour, but I can assure the audience that Real America's Voice will be carrying that press conference live. Now, the campaign, Jerome, you can hear me. You can hear it. I've, and my spirits have lifted yeah, since Bill Stepien exactly. came out and he said, it's ours. Boom. That's what we have been expecting all day. Like Hoping, a move, a bold move. A, a demanding. Move cla claiming what was given by the American people. The moral high ground, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so the campaign, so Giuliani's clearly not going to get up there and concede defeat. What do you expect him to say? I expect him to denounce the fact that 136,000 ballots magically appeared. I expect him to denounce all the fraudulent uh, methods that have been used to try and deprive the American people of the of the of the person that should uh, win the presidential election. No, that's okay. It's, it, France is very worried about about yeah. what's going on. They just don't understand. Your phone is blowing up and because people back home are asking exactly. You, what the heck Everybody is going wants on? to want want to understand, and you have to to say that on social media. These 136,000 ballots that appear, and, and you see the, 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 the line of the votes, and, and you clearly see that, that Donald Trump is ahead of Joe Biden, and suddenly you have a spike yeah. in, in, in a couple a of minutes, spike. a vertical spike yeah. that, that puts Biden ahead, and then it goes back to normal. Everybody You've knows seen it, it, is not, it is not. Not even no. I mean, it's a former French colony, so it, it was perfectly run. It, you, 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 you saw that Look, in, the in, in is, Banana Republic. The problem is America is turning into a former French colony. It served itself perfectly correctly as a former British colony. I, I, I will not agree. I will not let you say that. Our, our, the former French colonies are, are doing well. Thriving. They could do better. Yeah. But it, no, but seriously, it is, yeah. it is a Banana Republic. Yeah. At least some of the states, the yeah. way it is handled is not handled properly. And, and it is scary because it's a major Western power. The United States is not like a, one of the one among others. It is a, a leading country, the leading country in the Western world. And it doesn't feel comfortable to know that there, there, there could be a president elected uh, via fraud. And, and I hope that uh, Giuliani and his team will be able to make right to the American people and to the rest of the world. Okay, so... 
Uh, let's be very clear about this. The Trump campaign is, is declaring victory in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania right now. Uh, in Philadelphia, we're expecting the arrival of several senior Trump campaign uh, officials, Eric Trump, Rudy Giuliani, um, Pam Bondi, Corey Lewandowski, Laura Trump. This is all getting very interesting, all getting very exciting very quickly, Jerome. Um, I expect, for what it's worth, I expect, uh, as you say, for Giuliani to get up there and say, listen, number one, Despite fraud, we've got this in the back. But number two, to the perpetrators of the fraud, we're not letting it go. We're going to come after you. We're going to use the apparatus of the state to come after you. If, we, if, if, if for some reason Joe Biden is the president-elect and has declared the president-elect somehow, they're still going to prosecute this thing. They're not going to let it go because here's the deal. If you let them get away with it once, it's it forever. becomes their strategy forever it's part and parcel of their of their election strategy forever now clearly jerome they have learned this tactic from other banana republic style elections that have taken place in the western world such as in tower hamlets in the east in in, in the east of london such as in birmingham in the midlands it happens in other countries as well i had i've had hands-on experience with this kind of thing okay yeah, so, so have we, you know, in France, we sometimes, we, we sometimes have fraud, but at such a massive scale, it is unseen and unsinkable. Uh, you know, yesterday you mentioned something when you were talking with, uh, with, with Steve Bannon doing yeah. this, this eight-hour uh, amazing, yeah, ama am 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 amazing uh, count on, on, on the presidential election. You were mentioning that the Americans do not like a, a sore loser. Correct. The minute... Joe Biden didn't get Florida, the minute he didn't get Texas, the minute he didn't get Ohio, he was a loser. They knew it, they felt it, the American people knew it. You could see it on the faces on, of the pundit on TV, they all knew it was gone. Mm. So instead of, of, of accepting, of facing the fact that they, it was not their time, that the American people didn't want them, they turned into tricks. They are more than sole losers, they are, they are cheaters. And this is something that is really worrisome. Again, how can we have trust and faith in international relation with a, a, a leaders that would have been elected in a process that would be dubious? How can we talk in, in, in good faith with the commander in chief of a country that would have been elected in a weird process? It, it is something that is important for now for the American people, but you're also saying, for our saying, international you're relationship. That Joe Biden could not be seen by the international community as a legitimate president. I think that his election would be questioned. The the the, the person would you himself, view him as a legitimate president on the, the back of the, all of this. The, 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 I think that according to what we have seen right now, the, the, it is not a, a legitimate process to see in Pennsylvania the way it was done. Then you have litigation and you have court, and I hope that it, as it will go all the way to the Supreme Court, that your judicial system will be good enough to be able to sort out the bad from the good. So whatever comes out within days and weeks, it's not over until the Supreme Court will just say, look, this is what the American people have decided. And then one has to believe in the judicial, the, in the Supreme Court and right. the judicial system. But it is dangerous. Jerome Riviere, we'll be back with you in the next segment. The last segment here, we'll be monitoring the press conference. Real America's Voice returns in just a moment. This is a big deal. We're waiting for a press conference. The Trump campaign is declaring victory in Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, the media is pouring scorn on the idea of the Trump campaign being able to hold Arizona. Fox News' political editor Chris Stiawat is defending their network's claim. They're saying that more than 50% of ballots still being counted would have to go to Trump. And Fox News thinks that that is unlikely in Arizona given where the ballots were cast. Take a step back. Think about that for a second. The networks that have predicted things incorrectly for years and years, including this year's elections, the decision desk which have been calling things incorrectly, the political editors who have been telling you things that just aren't true, are making calls while you still have 
masses of numbers of votes to come in. In, in, in effect, what they're saying is they can read the minds of the voters. I mean, Jerome, you, you talked about um, David Copperfield. You know, the, the, they're magicians. You've got magicians putting the ballots in. You know, and you've got mind readers in the media now. But, uh, Raheem, there is one thing I don't understand in, in this process. Why would it be private company deciding to call or not to call an election? The private companies do not have the public interest at heart. They are there to make money. Right. There is nothing bad about that, but they are there to make a maximum amount of money for their stockholders. Right. So why would it be up to them to decide who is called as winner of a state or another state? This is something that needs to be reformed also. I, I, I don't feel comfortable, first of all, having social media deciding in the middle of the night to censor uh, one of the candidates who happens to be the sitting president of the United States. I don't feel comfortable with having private well, corporation deciding, look, I'm going to call uh, such, such, a, such and such state and resign, resigning themselves a few hours later saying, oh, maybe I was wrong. It, it looks like amateur hour. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not expect that from the American process. No, again. I, and look, I don't think anybody out there thinks that we're, we're maligning America or Americans. It's, it's, it's the fraudulent process which the elites have put us through in this situation. Now, look, let me, and we're waiting for this. I think we can get the image back up on the screen. We're waiting for this press conference to start in, in Pennsylvania. Um, it's just weird, a very weird setup going on there. I, I, I don't know if. Really supposed to just walk out into this crowd, which includes protesters, um, whether Eric Trump and Lara Trump. I mean, there's no secret service there that I can see. And, and given the, it's the family of the president, you would expect so. There's a FedEx truck going through there. Maybe there's some ballots in the back. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike, but that means stupid ones do too. Um, look, Jerome, let me ask you this. You, you talk about the media. You talk about the you know all of this process and everything. It, well, you must worry that this is going to be used. You've got you guys have an incredibly important election ahead of you in 2022 for the president of France. It's an incredibly important position, despite it being France. And <laughs> but you've got to be worried, right? That they're going to use the same fraudulent tactics on you. Forget look, forget the mail-in ballots. I know you don't have mail-in ballots, but the lies, the cheating, the stealing, the making false declarations. We we have been we have been living that for the past uh, 10, 20 years. We have a mainstream media that is always saying that we are crooked, saying that we just cannot uh, can, are not in a position to run the country. So there is nothing new to that. But there is. You know, at, at the end of this show, I just want to, to, to throw something positive. Yes. No matter what, no matter what, President Trump will have changed the paradigm in America and all over the world. Yeah. Now the people are back, nations are back, patriotism is back, and globalism is defending itself. So hopefully he will be, he will be elected so he can, he can work those four years to make sure that it goes fast. But globalism has been defeated. And, and and, and this is what I will carry out of this, elect, of this four years of President Trump, is that he, he put a, a new agenda on the table. And this agenda is the agenda that we have for Marine Le Pen and the Rassemblement National in France, pour, bringing back jobs inside the countries, bringing back national pride, making sure that nations co cooperate and, and work together and not surrender to a global financial agenda. Jerome, we're right at the end of the show here, and I, I really thank you for that uplifting message. Hey, just tell people, because they've seen you on the show three times now. You're an absolute rock star. People love you out there. Just tell people where they can find you, follow you, what they should be looking for online, how they can plug into what you and the Rassemblement National are doing. The, the, so, so I'm the head of the, of the group uh, at, the, at the European Parliament. We are 23 member of the European Parliament. I have a Twitter, Twitter account, Jerome underscore Rivière, Jer Jerome underscore Rivière. Here. And uh, on the Rassemblement National, it's rassemblementnational.fr. It's not .fr because it's France, and we're proud to be French, the way you're proud to be uh, British, and the way all our audience are proud to be American. Uh, we are we're really working to make sure that that uh, France. 
takes it, its place as a, as a power of equilibrium. We, we don't want to surrender to the United States, we don't want to surrender to any nations. And what we really deeply appreciate with President Trump is that he didn't bring his country to foreign wars. He's the first president since Eisenhower not to have brought America to foreign wars. He doesn't see America as the policeman of the world. And this is something important. He's asking all countries to, to take responsibility of themselves. And this is what we want. And, and, and I hope this is what we can achieve. Jerome Rivier, thank you once again. Ladies and gentlemen, I just checked my email inbox while, uh, while Jerome was talking and wrapping up there at the end. And I can't thank you enough. I've just seen that so many people have gone over to the nationalpulse.com uh, forward slash support to support our work. And, you know, Natalie Winters is running the live blog. She's, do she's there doing it by herself. And I, I frankly, I've been in the media industry now for a decade plus more. Yeah, 11, 12 years. She is doing the single best coverage of all the fraud and the deception out there that there is. It's at thenationalpulse.com. It's in the breaking section. You'll see it there. It's the first story. It's every single story from all around the country. And, and you need to share those things. You need to tell other people that it's happening. You need to make sure uh, we have the Twitter feed at the Nat Pulse. And we're sharing every single story as we, as we get it, as Natalie Winters gets it. So I just want to say a great massive uh, thank you to everybody who's supporting our work. Look, obviously, the press conference is running late, but stick around here on Real America's Voice. I'm sure that will be with you in just a matter of moments. You're going to want to hear from the president's campaign what they're saying about Pennsylvania, but also what's going on all around the country as well. Let me leave you with this. Keep the faith. We might, we might just well have this one. See you tomorrow.